Good day, good day, and uh, welcome to Africa Teen Geek, uh, which has presented you guys with the STEM Digital School. Yes, um, uh, I hope that everybody is doing well. And just joined in, this is the grade 10 physical sciences class. If you're in the right, this is the grade 10 physical sciences class. So my name, as you can see my picture right here on the corner, I am Nongkululego Madondo and I am your teacher for this class. And I hope that everybody is excited, you know, to be doing some um, grade 10 work. So another thing I wanted to remind you guys, you guys can catch me on my, which is Trio Madondo. You can get it on LinkedIn and um, listen. I'll give you guys my email address. If you guys have any questions that you guys want to clarify, or you know things that you guys don't understand. I am right here for you, ready to help you as your teacher. Another thing I wanted to tell you guys is that as I'm teaching along, wherever you might get stuck, just send me and I'll make sure that I, you know, attend to it um, because I'm trying with any voice chats because unless um, we get some more time and you guys have a few questions that you'd like to ask. But while I'm teaching, you can just you, you guys can just you know um stop me so that i can explain things to you and we can go on like that the aim of this class is to make sure that you are an a student in grade 10 and you each and everything as you guys will see i'm going to be going slow on every topic so that we make sure that everybody does topic because um every part of physical sciences is important and it's something that you, you guys have to know Okay, so we're good with all the rules of this class. Uh, you can raise your hand, you can ask a question whenever, and I'll clarify everything, and uh, we'll be good to go. Okay. Uh, just trying to go to my next slide. Um, tell you guys that uh, we have, oh, I don't know why it's taking so slow now. We have, apparently the caps has been adjusted and modified. I'm just trying to get the, what I wanted to do, okay. Our caps has been amended for this year. We are right here on, on, on grade 10. Um, this is the amendment for each phase, okay. So what they've done here for mechanics, everything is still the same. We'll still be doing whatever you guys have done this year. Sound and light, there's no amendments. But when it comes to electricity and magnetism, moved. So which means that you do not have to learn anything with regards to magnetism anymore. It's, it's out of the syllabus. And we also have matter and material. On matter and material, um, the particles substances are made of that section has also been removed so guys please just make these notes down otherwise you might end up studying too much work that you do not need has been revised okay so and then in chemical change chemical change they remove the reactions in aqueous solution okay so note that down and then you've got uh chemical systems uh, whereby they remove the hydrosphere from that part, okay? So, the reorganization of the contents, okay? Particle substances are made of term two. On term two was removed, like I've just mentioned. We'll move short from term two to term three, which is a physical and chemical and representing chemical change, which is what we're going to be starting with. As you guys remember, we are starting off with term three, um, today, okay. Magnetism was also removed. Please, guys, note that as well. Electrostatics and electric circuits will remain as only topics in term two, okay. And chemical changes representing chemical change and quantitative aspects were grouped in term three. So, which means this is a topic that we are doing right now, okay. Another thing that I want to let you guys know is that as I teach. I am referencing everything that I'm doing here from the Sia Vula grade 10 textbook and also the, the study master textbook. 
So if you have one of those textbooks, you can sort of follow it from one textbook and another, and I just merge them together in my presentation. Have those textbooks, um, please um, do follow through so that it'll be easier for you guys as well, you know, to prepare for the next class as you'll be able to read through. And guess what? You can get them absolutely free from Snaplified. I don't know if you guys have heard of that application. It's Snaplified. Um, you register for it. Textbooks are free until the year because of the COVID-19 problems. They've made these textbooks free. So you can go there. And you can prepare not just for physical sciences, but for every other subject that you guys have. Okay, so now we've, we've spoken about things that are removed. We're not going to be doing um, reactions in aqueous phase this, this term. So that one has been cleared out. And this is how your stuff is going to be grouped together for your in exam. Okay, you see, mechanics is taking a lot of marks now. They've about 16.7%. Um, wave, sound, and light is still the same. And electricity and magnetism is actually increased as well because why? They've removed. The chemical systems you see for this year okay therefore we'll be working on the 26 okay. okay so what are we going to be doing today today we are um, our content is as followed we're going to have the introduction to the chapter the introduction to the chapter and then um, we're going to talk about what it means to to rearrange particles and you talk about physical change changes and chemical changes okay so this is all part of the um chemical changes and we are trying to we're doing the first part of it which is the first unit it's actually unit three and uh, that's what we're going to be doing today okay introduction to chemical changes what we need to know is in the second part of chemical changes, we will focus on chemical reactions, how they work and how to write a balanced chemical reaction. Okay. I know this is still new for, for you guys, um, but it's going to be quite simple as we go along. Okay. There will be a discussion on chemical reactions on our everyday application. Okay. So that's the stuff that we're going to be talking about as well because um, you guys, in our test, in our exam, we always try to merge our everyday life with the stuff that we do theoretical. So this chapter will be subdivided into the following topics. We're gonna have physical and chemical change, representing chemical change, and this one that is removed, then we're not gonna do it. Then we're gonna jump straight to quantitative aspects of all these topics will explain how chemical reactions take place up until we start being able to do full chemical reactions okay so most chemical reactions happen in water usually releasing a gas changing the pH of the solution or sometimes um, resulting in formation of salts so these are all chemical reactions mostly made up of blood and water and these reactions are fundamental as well um, of our biochemistry. So uh, a lot of chemical reactions happen in our body as well, as we know that our cells release um, energy and all of that, that is also part of um, chemical reactions that happen inside our body, okay? So the chemical industry relies on ability of chemists and to know the amount of chemical needed to perform a reaction. What does that mean? It means that whenever to make some medicines, etc. What needs to happen is that they need to know how much of the reactants or the chemicals need to be added together to form a certain product. So basically, that is talking about the quantity, the quantitative part of um, chemical. I hope that you guys understand, and all of this is what we're going to be covering in the. 
Okay. So today we're doing um, the first unit of this section where we talk about um, physical changes and chemical changes. This is where we are defining it. And guys, please make sure that you understand. If you don't, just drop me a chat and I'll reach where you're getting stuck, okay? So physical changes, okay? Before we talk about physical changes, it changes in matter, okay? When looking at the changes in a substance, it's important that we don't just look at the physical state of the substance, but the changes that allow the substance to form a new one, okay? Matter is all around us, basically, on a day. It's all matter, okay? Matter can be defined as a substance which occupies space and possesses mass according to the Oxford Dictionary. So that is what matter is. And these are definitions that you guys have to know because these are definitions that might come out in your chemistry paper. Okay, this is your paper to do. So in this kind of a chain, okay, what do, what do we have? Describe what is physical change. Physical change is change that take place when a particle of a substance involves are not broken up in any way, okay? Those are physical changes. And I've brought about a little example here of a physical change. What, what that basically means, it means that um, the substance might change the appearance, but the physical makeup, at the end of the day, it's still water. It doesn't change into water, still water. It's just ice or it's melted or it's... Those are physical changes. That's what they talk about when you talk about physical changes. The, 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 the chemical element is still the same. It's still water and it's reversible, okay? So in this kind of change, the physical appearance of a substance changes, but the molecular structure does not change, okay? I hope that you understand what that means, okay? So conduction, which is a transfer of energy through material, is also a form of physical change. So, you know, when you talk about physical change, water is always the best description uh, because it's the one element you can ice it, you can melt it, you can do all of that, and it does not change. It's still water at the end of the day. So, it is um, a best example for physical changes. Okay. So, during physical change, the form of the substance will change, but not the chemical makeup, which we've already mentioned. Mention needs to be noted when dealing with physical changes, okay? I'm not sure, can you guys see the structure properly? Okay, so uh, I just want, I just put the structure on to show you guys um, what it means when you talk about the arrangement of particles. So these are the particles, you see, the molecules here are, are all intact. This is the solid state of um, your, so that's the arrangement of the particles, okay? Here, they are all intact and they are all bonded well with each other. And then when they melt, um, they move to this stage, they start rearranging each other. They start rearranging each other, but they're still the same water molecules. Nothing has changed, okay? And as the liquid boils and it evaporates, okay, they, they grow further apart, but they still Okay, so arrangement of particles, the particles in a physical change and rearrange with each other, but will not break up. So you see, they are rearranging, but they are not breaking apart or, for example, you know, changing into a different um, uh, particle. They're still the same particle, okay? So, in the example of evaporation that we used, that we usually use, the water molecules move further apart as the temperature increases, which is what we see here. The same would be true if ice were to melt, okay? If ice were to melt, this is what we'd see right here. This would be the ice, the molecules all intact, and here it is, now it's melting. They, they, they rearranging still the same molecule, okay? So water molecules are packed closely together in a very ordered when the ice is heated, the molecules overcome the forces holding them together and move apart. Once again, the particles have rearranged themselves but have not 
broken up, okay? I hope that you guys understand what I've just explained here. So let's, okay, now we've spoken about particles, the arrangement of particles. Now we come to the energy change. What does, physical, what, what does it mean when we talk about physical change and the energy change in it? It means that the amount of energy transferred during physical changes is very small compared to the energy transfer in a chemical change. Why is that? Because it's intermolecular, okay? Water is bonded, okay, it's bonded. The intermolecular bonds are weaker than particle bonds. What are particle bonds? Particle bonds um, the, um covalent, ionic, metallic bond. These are the bonds that holds the atom together. So basically, it's inside here, okay? They are the atoms that, that hold, for example, O and H. Those bonds that are holding those two together. Those ones are what we call our particle bonds, okay? And ionic or metallic. So, but we're going to get to that uh, this chapter, okay? So, they are reversible. That's another property that you need to know. So, the first property is the arrangement of particles. The second one is the energy change. Is that the, um, the energy um, is very small compared to the one for chemical change. And the third one is that it's reversible. It's much easier to reverse a chemical bond. What does that about reverse? Is that you can melt water and you can boil it. Take water and ice it. So it's a reversible reaction that's happening. So you do not put anything. It's, it's sort of like letting nature take its course. I don't know if it makes sense to you guys, but that's what it means, okay? So here I've brought a couple of examples of physical changes. Okay, changes are melting, dissolving, evaporating. Okay, those you see natural means of um of of doing of, of doing this reactions. So these are the natural means. So that's why they are the physical changes. So separating techniques such as distillation, which is this one in this case. Mm -mm. This one is a distillation, okay? A distillation where they heat up and then it goes in and then it gets um, separated. For example, they try cooling water and they're trying to separate the solvent. Here, what's going to remain here is that it's, it's going to remain salt, but over here, then we're going to have the water. So this is going to be separated. So this is distillation process. And then we have the paper, paper filtration. I think it's this one. Also, it gets, no, this is the evaporation one. This one, uh, basically you heat it up, up until the water evaporates and you get whatever particle that is left behind, okay? And then this one is filtration as well. Um, they're basically filtering um, a substance. There's probably a paper in there. The liquid gets left behind, and the the solutes, the solutes also paper that will be put in here. But we also have the paper chromatography. Okay, this one is basically where you have a black ink spot, and this is the paper. So you put it in the salts of a uh, in the solvent, in the beaker, and then when it soaks, whatever you get, it will tell you what it is that you're looking for. So these examples make it more lively for you guys to understand that what it means when you talk about physical changes. Okay? Any questions, you can drop me a chat. And now we're moving on. Now we're going to the much deeper stuff which is the chemical what are chemical changes okay we've spoken about the physical the one way what you have but not the identity of it but now we come to chemical changes what are chemical changes okay before we do that once again um, we're going to start explaining the chemical change in matter okay you, can, you guys can follow through on, if you have a student book or uh, 
um, study and master textbook, it's okay. But if you also have successful textbook, you can also follow the guide. These are all CAPS approved textbooks. They all give you the same information, just in different ways, okay? So chemical change, the transformation of one or more substance So before we had a change whereby it's the physical state that was changed. So now it's the chemical makeup changed. So basically when you take particle A and particle B and um, they react together, they give you particle C, uh, A, B gives you A plus B. So you break, these ones are the ones where the bonds break. Before, remember we said, the bonds don't break, but this, this changes. This, in this case, the bonds do break. They have to break in for a new um, substance to be formed or substances to be formed, okay? In a chemical change, a new substance is formed after the reaction. This substance can have different structural properties from the one before the reaction, okay? So what does that mean, guys? That basically means that, um, they mean here when they have they can have different structural properties for example you can have one that is let's say is a solid and what it gives you it gives you a gas and a liquid you know so that is what it means when they say the structural properties can also can also be changed but not all the times um sometimes they still remain the same like especially when you work with um with with substances those ones they tend sometimes to have L and still give you a liquid and etc. So with these ones, the sometimes you get a solid that gives you a liquid and a gas. So it changes the structure completely. An example of a chemical change is a breakdown or decomposition reaction of copper chloride to form copper and chlorine. Okay. So here we have it. We have the the copper to chlorine. And this will give you, after the reaction, it will give you copper two, okay? So this is a chemical reaction, it's a chemical change. So in a chemical change, one type of matter is changed to a new type of matter. In a chemical reaction, the substances you start with are known as reactants that forms unknown as the product, okay? So example of what I'm saying, these two are reactants because they are before this arrow. Whatever you have after the arrow is a product. So hydrogen plus oxygen reactants will give you a product, okay? Guys, this is important stuff that you guys have to most definitely know because you're gonna need it when you're doing your chemical reaction. I just want um, a few examples on page 372 of the Vula textbook. Okay, so here, here, is what, here is what we have, okay? We have the physical changes and the chemical changes, okay? So here, it's basically when you have sugar and you add water and it becomes sugar in the water. But on this side, we have acid and sugar. And what does this give us? It gives us, it makes a serious chemical reaction that gives um, rising carbon and rising, rising carbon column, okay? So these are the differences. This one is a simple reaction. It, it's what you see basically. Um, you see sugar, there's a chemical reaction that happens there that can only be explained by you, okay? So we make an iron filling and sulfur mixture by stirring them together. In mixture of both elements, retain the original properties and no chemical reaction occurs. To separate the mixture, we can remove the iron filling by storing the mixture with a magnet, okay? So this is also another form of separation, but we've already done the other forms of separations that we spoke about. So um, 
Let me see if we have other examples. Okay, this one is the iron sulfur reacts to form um, iron sulfide. Obviously, now this is a chemical change. Yes, this is a chemical change. Okay, two other examples of chemical changes are the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide to form water and oxygen gas synthesis reaction when hydrogen burns in oxygen to form water okay so you will investigate these two chemical um in the following experiments we are not going to do the experiments because we do not have laboratories but hopefully um when the schools open or or it might happen um just to read through them guys if you guys can read through this thing you'll, you, there's a lot that you can understand they tell you the result they tell you what's happening in the experiment and um, what you're going to get so these are stuff that you guys can just learn for you know own general knowledge okay so these are more experiments that you guys can work through just read through them guys you don't have to do them per se um calculations and doing the um chemical reactions okay so yeah i think this is all that i wanted you guys to see that um you guys can read through this um, experiment. Now, going back to our slides. Okay. Guys, I hope that everybody, it's making sense to you guys and you still know what is going on here, okay? So, the two types of chemical reactions we'll be working with is the decomposition reaction and the synthetic reaction okay so explaining these two and their differences a decomposition reaction occurs when an element is broken down into smaller pieces okay so you can just imagine what happens during a decomposition any body just breaks down into smaller pieces until there's nothing left you can think of it that way it's a whole body and it starts breaking down so that's what happens. It occurs when an element is broken down into smaller elements. So the general equation in a decomposition reaction is, for example, AB will give you A plus B. Okay, guys, these are important terms that you guys have to know, even for your exams, because they might be multiple choice um, or a true or false question. So these are things I'm giving you, like things on how you can try to remember um, them okay. So an example of a decomposition reaction is the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide to form hydrogen and oxygen. So this is our hydrogen perox peroxide, and it gives us water and oxygen. Okay, the equation here has been, but this is a decomposition reaction. Okay, and then the second one that we have is the synthetic reaction, okay? A new element is formed from a smaller compound, from smaller compounds, okay? So you've got smaller compounds now, you are building a, 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 a you are building something, synthetically you are making up something, okay? So in this case, you'll have A plus B. Synthetic reaction is basically opposite from what a decomposition reaction is. This decomposition, it's one element broken down into small compounds. This one is small compounds that make up an element, okay, or a compound. So an example of a synthetic reaction of magnesium oxide to form magnesium oxide. Magnesium in oxygen, sorry to form magnesium oxide, okay? So we're gonna have magnesium plus oxygen will give us MgO, which is magnesium oxide. Guys, are you guys following through? Are you guys understanding? Um, can we move on? Do you guys now see what's the difference between chemical change and physical change? If there's somewhere you're still stuck, just let me know. But none continuing, okay? So now this is your homework. But before we get to that, um, there's just some example that I want to see if I still have it here. 
Oh, okay, here's a Sia Wola textbook. So here, um, here basically they're also just doing a bit of experiments. As you can see here, um, obviously this is a synthetic reaction because it's small pieces form as one. Um, I'm just trying to get an example you can use for you guys to know how to get work done, okay? Okay, I think let me check on the other textbook. Guys, please make sure that you guys do your homework each and every day. It's the only way that you guys get to learn, okay? So I can't find it here. So we'll just continue from what we have, okay? This is our homework. I want you guys to do it, but um, I'll, I'll think I'll do the first two for you guys, okay? So the, there's a description here. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think you can do them all, they're quite easy. Um, it's just for you guys to refresh your memory, your mind working and thinking physics and chemistry, okay? We are doing chemistry. Um, they give you a description and they ask whether it's a physical or chemical change. And you must be able to give the reason why, okay? So the first one we have there, it says melting candle wax. Is it a physical or chemical? Can you guys answer that? If you can, just send it in your chat and just to test your knowledge and see if you're getting it right. But if you remember properly, if we go back, um, let's see, if we go back, we spoke about um, how physical the, the the examples of physical change is the ones that you can just see it's great it's physical change indeed it's a, it's a change that you can change the physical makeup so a candle is still a candle even if you melt it so you guys are definitely right this is a physical change okay and Okay, I'm trying again. Okay, so what about dissolving NaCl? What does that mean? Okay, let's see, somebody has done it. Chemical. Mm. Anyone else? Anyone else? Definitely right. Dissolving NaCl is a chemical. Okay. Because it gives you um, two different elements again, plus water. Um, so it is a chemical reaction. Okay, guys. Um, it seems that you guys have caught through with what we've been doing here and you're understanding more or less what you've been doing. So, guys. Please go and do the rest of the. I'm not giving you guys tough homework. We're still going to get to a lot of homework. But for today, I'd like you to focus on this, these ones, and we'll do them tomorrow uh, when our classes start again at 8. And then um, we'll get more to the next unit. Okay. Thank you guys so much for a beautiful lesson. And um, if you guys have any questions, uh, you guys can. Contact me. T three three T Lovu at Gmail dot com. I'm just trying to uh, okay. Um I'm just trying to
see you guys can hit me up on t3tgovertigo.com for further problems or questions that you guys would like to know. Strictly Physical Sciences Grade 10. And please, guys, right now we are doing chemistry. So let's stay relevant and do some chemistry. teacher and thank you guys for a beautiful class and for all the activities that you guys have partaken in and please this is africa teen geek online school this is a stem digital school and thank you guys so much and